you know, uh, uh, is there a world leader, a role model, someone inspirational, whether it's an activist, uh, a politician, someone you've met, a young innovator out there who makes you feel positive? Uh, is there someone, uh, some experience you want to share with us of someone you've met who makes you feel hopeful about the future when it comes to climate change? Yeah, when I spend time with these new companies uh, that I've been lucky enough to invest in through Breakthrough Energy, I see so many great ideas. Now, many of them won't work, but for each of the key areas, we have at least five companies uh, that believe they have an approach. So it's only through innovation uh, that I gain hope here. There is a lot of policy work. Um, you know, Europe, I would get by far the highest grade of really making uh, this issue front and center for them. Uh, and, you know, the world needs that because the rich countries have a lot of the innovation power and we need to tap into that, even in areas where the breakthroughs on things like steel and cement, you know, they haven't been the sexy areas for smart people to go work in, but we're trying to change that right now and get more of those brilliant minds engaged. Conversely, are there any leaders or corporates or uh, whose attitude or blind spots or tardiness makes you feel worried or, or dismayed in a way, Bill Gates? You can be frank about that here. Well, historically, the oil and gas industry did confuse the consensus on climate. And, you know, that was self-interested and, you know, very unfortunate because with the science as complex as it is, any sort of uncertainty or doubt means it's harder to get through to the Democratic voter uh, who they set the priorities for the country. And so, you know, that whole idea that in the United States, at least, we, the Republican Party has not made this a priority. Now, I'm very hopeful that young Republicans will uh, see it uh, and they may have different idea of, of how to solve the problem, but they'll see it as a priority. In most other countries, uh, all the political parties uh, agree that this is a very, very high priority. In fact, a lot of the money that's being allocated coming out of the pandemic in the US and Europe is labeled for these green projects uh, which will uh, advance the innovation. But, but in your view, is, this, uh, is technology going to be the most important solution or is it going to be uh, political leadership that provides the solution, corporate leadership, policy changes, or dare I say, human behavior of civil society, citizenship that is going to have to embrace climate change and its solutions? Yeah, we won't be able to get there with all, all, all three of those. Uh, governments will have to help create markets uh, so that even when the electric cars are a little more expensive, uh, they get purchased and that volume will drive the price down. So eventually the extra cost, what I call the green premium will be zero. That's ideal, we need to do that across all these areas. For electricity, uh, the solar panels, uh, at least during the day, that electricity is that actually cheaper than running a coal plant. So we, we have some good examples uh, where we've gotten there, but I'd put government at the top of the list because building this new grid and shifting that physical economy, uh, their policies have to accelerate this in almost an unnatural speed uh, in order for it to happen. So, you know, policy is on top, but without innovation, the cost, the sacrifice that we'd be asking, make, making people to make is just far too large.